Here we go. All right, and we are live. Welcome, everyone, to Friday Night on Sunday, the service podcast with the Vagabond Chef. Uh, I'm happy to be joined this week by my friend Rob Donahue. Say hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. <laughs> uh, thank everyone for joining us this week. Um, this is uh, kind of just a really informal uh, podcast about the industry and a conversation with some of the folks that that I know and have worked with. And before we get into it tonight, I did want to shout out some of the things I got going on coming up. Um, next week, I'll be down at JQ Dickinson Salt Works in South Charleston to do a dinner down there. I believe there are a couple tickets left uh, if anyone's interested in that area. And then the week after that, I'll be doing a dinner at Community Kitchen in Pittsburgh uh, with my friend John Grabowski, who was the first sous chef that I worked under when I started my career at West Liberty University. Uh, and I believe that John's going to be my guest the weekend after that dinner. So that'll be super cool. Um, and then we've got the National Pro Start Invitationals in Washington, D.C. the first week of May. Leading into Sunday, the seventh uh, Taste of Blue Ridge Root to Table event at she in Shepherdstown at the Bavarian Inn. Uh, and then a bit of a pause with the out-of-town events to do Mother's Day and all that around here. Uh, and then on May 20th, there will be an Appalachian evening in Marshall County at the Moundsville Waterfront. And then on Memorial Day weekend, I'm doing a weekend uh, gourmet getaway sort of situation at Hawks Nest State Park. That'll be super, super cool. So a lot of cool things coming up. Uh, hoping to keep doing this podcast every week. Uh, somehow in the midst of all that uh, and keep talking to people and having good conversations. So. That's where we're at. What do you think, man? Two turntables and a microphone. Where's that? So uh, Rob and I have known each other for at least 10 years now. It, you, yeah. We met when I first came back to the area after my Vagabond Chef tripping. And, uh, you know, I, I always laugh because I kind of was snooty, uh, sno like a snooty chef, a snobby chef, and kind of turned my nose up at uh, food trucks. But at that time, you were a sales rep for Cisco. Correct. And uh, Rob walked into the establishment where I was hanging my knives at the time uh, with some kind of crazy Colonel Sanders hairdo and on his beard and I love, um, I love that <laughs> I, uh, a suit that was maybe a size too big for him and i was like who in the hell is this guy what's going on here um and you know i i told you man i, I was gonna gush up about you a little bit like um what what a hell of a dude you are and and how how far you go out of your way to help people i mean you you were there to sell me food but you were there anytime i needed a hand with a gig with a catering and i know you did that for other clients and friends in the industry and um, were always available, whether it was for, uh, you know, as a sounding board or if it was uh, just to actually drive a knife and lend a hand, um, you were always right there. And that was, that's some impressive shit, man. It's good stuff, especially like the chili cook off. That was, that was always yeah. fun. The chili cook off is definitely a good time. So yeah, we, uh, we formed a pretty fast and fun relationship and, um, got to talking about stuff and then you were a huge help when I was first getting the Vagabond kitchen open I don't know if you remember meeting with me down at Coleman's fish market oh I do like... I I had I didn't but you just jogged my memory yeah yeah I think you had like a a dozen page document of all the all the things that we were likely to need for our first order and I hadn't thought of 80 percent of it you know like toilet paper you're like oh oh yeah we're gonna need that too i i would have never <laughs> right? thought of that exactly it's the um, little things yeah man toothpicks so that's only like the the middle of your service industry experience when did you get started what like what was your entry level was it uh on the service side or in the back of the house um i guess uh my first job was where the golden chopsticks is now on the island mm -hmm. Before it was the Golden Chopsticks, it was called the Docks. Really? Um, mm -hmm. And then before that, it was called the uh, some, uh, Apple Apple Jacks. 
No way. See, I don't remember any, anything other than Golden Chopsticks. Okay. Um, so I started working there my junior year in high school as a busboy. And um, I went to Rome on a summer trip uh, for a couple weeks. And uh, the, the restaurant closed down mm-hmm. while I was away. My parents didn't want to tell me over the phone. So, you know, I come back, come back home after being far away for two weeks and I don't have a job. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, and you, you are a Wheeling Island boy, right? I am I'm born and raised. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, so let me see. Uh, it turned uh, soon after Martin opened chopsticks. So I got reapplied and got a job there as a bus boy, washed some dishes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, uh, this is, yeah, the best job I ever had was, um, I got fired from the chopsticks, whatever. Uh, <laughs> it's Milbra time. That's what <laughs> Marty always used to say. <laughs> and, uh, went down to, um, what was Tom's finish line, mm-hmm. but, uh, several weeks after working there and washing dishes and learning to cook from a couple of the guys there. Um, Tom turned it into um, Godfathers. The strip and, club? Yes, the strip club. Okay. And um, a couple days into it, uh, you know, there's, there's still a functioning kitchen and everything. And uh, the, um, the, the DJ quit. And Tom comes to the back and he says, Does anybody know how to run this equipment? Mm-hmm. And everybody kind of looks around and I said, I can. <laughs> so I'm 18 years old uh-huh. and I get, I'm the DJ at a strip club for two weeks because uh, he couldn't find somebody. <laughs> and like I would announce the girls, they come out, I'd play their set and then they'd come up in my DJ box to, you know, put something, cover up some, and they're just talking to me like, yeah. you know, hey, shooting the shit. You right know, that kind of stuff right just a day in the day in the job a day in the job and uh you know i'm 18 years old so yeah it, it, was, it was the coolest thing i've ever done <laughs> um, i didn't know about that part of your history that's pretty great yep um let me see left there went to uh it was called boots i remember uh, boots okay on national road yep yeah and then from there i ha- found out outback was opening and i went to outback uh, and opened that out back and worked there and was an assistant manager for uh, some time. I don't really know how long. And then yeah. I was asked to go do uh, an opening in Norfolk, Virginia. Mm. So I moved to Virginia and um, did the kitchen manager thing down there. Uh, and, uh, you know, I had blue and green and purple hair and yeah and i worked in norfolk virginia lived in virginia beach and there's a big navy presence there uh-huh. and uh i they didn't like they didn't they didn't like uh you know guys that were like my boyfriend's a marine shirt <laughs> i picked that up one of the one of the um uh the thrift stores that didn't go over very well no 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 um so I moved back to St. Clairsville and worked at Outback and I saw an ad in a paper. Um, I wasn't really looking to go anywhere. I was happy, you know, KM and and doing all that kind of stuff. And in the paper, it said, um, it was was real, real vague. Mm -hmm. It said kitchen managers, general managers, and uh, something else. I don't Mm -hmm. know. And it just had a phone number. So you, I didn't know what I was calling to do or, you That's know, interesting. had no idea. And uh, I called this guy, and he picks up and we have a little conversation. He, he says, do you want to meet? And I was like, okay. So we met at Hardy's and Bob, uh, uh, Barry. Um, and he goes, uh, so do you know what you're here interviewing for? And I was like, no, nah, I don't have any idea. He goes, well, uh, I'm the 
general sales manager of a small company called Steubenville Fruit Company, which is long since defunct. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he said, you know, we find we find that uh, people that have been in the business sell food better than somebody just out of college with a business degree because right. they don't know what they're selling. Right. And I said, oh, okay, that's cool. And we talked a little more. And he's like, so is this something you might consider? And I said, well, yeah, probably. Yeah, sounds sounds like a plan. Mm-hmm. He goes, well, you know, you're going to have to take that shit out of your face, right? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, 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 we're good. We're good. That's, you know, it can go. Uh, so that's where I got into sales. Mm-hmm. I worked and, there. And, and he was right, man. Um, having a background in the industry and, and being able to talk the talk, um, and like I said, you actually went further and walked the walk, but at least being able to, you know, speak in kitchen lingo and understand what, you know, what the, the chefs are looking for, uh, that goes such a long way. Oh, and yeah, like, you know, you don't, you don't walk into a prospect or even a customer at, you know, 12, 15 and think you're going to have a conversation with right. the head chef. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, it's just the, etiquette to be had and common sense to be had. And right. If you, if you weren't in the business, you wouldn't know. Right, right. Yeah, the 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 best guys I ever had to try to get my business would come and eat at the restaurant a few times mm-hmm. and then say, hey, I've been here. I've seen what you're doing. I've, you know, I've eaten here a few times and I really think I could help out. Like that's sales these days. And that's the kind of salesperson sure. I think you were. Uh, it was about building relationship and providing a service to folks. Uh, on the other side, I've I've <laughs> I've had people just show up unannounced at my office, um, which no one really knows where my office is, and I I like it that way. Um, <laughs> it's a very private place where I try to get a lot of work done, and I'll never forget coming in one morning, and uh, there was a there's a knock on the door, and I was like, must be somebody, you know, from down from the restaurant or downstairs or whatever. And I just said, come in, and I I was there for such a short amount of time that I hadn't even unlocked the door yet. So they're like, you know, so like, oh, hold on. So I open the door and there's two guys in suits standing there and I'm wearing my chef coat. And, and the guy says, uh, uh, we're looking for Chef Matt. And I was like, yeah, he's not here. It says Chef Matt, like right on my, right. Right on my coat. He's not here. And he said, okay, well, we, 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 uh, we're from this company and this is what we do. And I said, you know, yeah, I'm familiar with your company. I, I know what you do. And he said, oh, well, it says right here, you're, you're Chef Matt. I said, yeah, man. But like, I don't want to talk to you. Like, Give, give me your card if i want you i'll reach out like don't just come across me at my office and i was like you know like i'm in the middle of stuff kind of get out of here well then two weeks later that same guy came back and it was the same situation where like i had just gotten into the office i hadn't unlocked the door yet he knocked on the door i answered the door and and there he was again i'm like what are you doing like how in, in what world is this okay like get the hell out of here um so anyway that as a the opposite of what i found that's what i expected um from a sales rep and then you prove me wrong that there's other people out there that don't act like that sure sure and i i suspect that when you started what what was the company that your first sales job what was it called it's called steubenville fruit company yeah it's kind of like the jebbies of steubenville okay okay and now did you take to it right away or what did you what did you bring to that job like what um like what, what did you get what sales were at first or is it something you had to learn over time Mm, it's something I had to learn over time. Uh, I'm naturally kind of reclusive and, um, uh, um, that's, that's not my, that's not my, um, that's just, you know, not my standard, standard operating procedure. So I had to force myself to do certain things and, um, and, uh, create, how do you say, um, a, a fake, not a, not a fake personality, but a, yeah, but like a, a persona, like a, like a, a server does. Well, more more so in, internally, like a fake drive. Oh, like okay. To to just because you know you don't you don't feel the same every day. You know, some days mm-hmm. you wake up and you're ready to rock and roll, and there's other days you wake mm-hmm. up and you know you you could give a whatever about anybody or anything, right? Um, and you just have to learn to get mentally into the position where hey every day is every day you are trying to help somebody out Mm -hmm. so how uh, long did you do that did you do that i worked for them for two years 
uh, and then I got a job offer from U.S. Food Service um, out of Hurricane, West Virginia. So I went over to there, worked there for seven years, and then got a job offer from Cisco. Um, and I wasn't going to take it because I was happy where I was at. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, this guy calls me out of nowhere. And I'm on my way home. It's like 5.30. Um uh, so I started yakking with him on the phone. He's like, "Yeah, my name's Don Carson. I'm the I'm the district sales manager for Cisco Pittsburgh." Well, uh, you know, I'd like to know if you'd like to sit down and talk and see, you know, if there's some opportunity. And I said, "No, man." I said, "Honestly, I'm like super happy. I mean, like everything's good. Like, uh, I uh, not not right now." Yeah. And he yeah. goes, "Well, take down my number, and if anything ever changes, give me a call." And I said, okay. Um, so I finally get home and get out of my car. And I look at my new house that my wife and I had just bought mm-hmm. and walked in the door to my mm, seven month pregnant wife, maybe mm-hmm. eight. Um, and I just, it kind of slapped me in the face. Like, why would I not consider an opportunity uh, for a better, for a better life? Mm -hmm. Um, So I called him right back and I said, Hey, I reconsidered. I'd Mm -hmm. like to talk. Mm -hmm. And um, my wife's kind of smug, smug looking me because what she's, they made me an offer and I wasn't sure if I was going to accept it or not. And then, she um she helped me with deciding to go ahead and accept that <laughs> offer but she thought i wasn't going to mention that <laughs> anyway <laughs> um because i did deliberate but yeah. it was it was more money and um it kept me closer to home because a yeah. lot of the sales i was doing with u.s food service was uh 45 minutes away like my first account was 45 minutes away oh, Cambridge, wow. ohio yeah and uh and I, that would keep me way closer to home. I'd drive a lot less miles, spend a lot less time on the road. Mm-hmm. That'd give me more time to a do my job, mm-hmm. b see my family. Mm-hmm. So it was uh, yep. it was a thing to do. And then probably uh, I was at US at Cisco. Yeah, I I think I think you and I met maybe my first, if not my second year at Cisco. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I wasn't sure how long you'd been a, a rep with them when we met. Yeah, it had to be one year one or two because. Um, I bought PJs in 2016, mm-hmm. um, and I, I, I'm, that would have put me 2010 at Cisco. So, so I thought that we bet in 2011, if I had to guess. Oh gosh, let's see. No, it was um, it was actually 2014. It was January of 2014. Oh, it was that late. Okay, mm-hmm. so it was I was with Cisco yeah. for a couple of years. Yep. Cool. So, uh, yeah, and then you kind of mentioned there you you d- made the decision to move out of sales and uh, and actually, after having worked with multitudes of restaurant owners, you decided to become one, which uh, I don't know should should you have your head examined or is that a good was that a good call? What do you think? Um, uh, that's been uh, and that was in 2016, like you said, so that's right. been five years or right. no, no, my math is horrible seven, seven years yeah, um it, it was. As a business owner of PJ's Pizza, he was um, he wanted to sell, but he didn't want to put it out onto the open market. Mm-hmm. He wanted to sell it to somebody he knew and would run it the way he ran it and not change it mm-hmm. because it's a staple of New Martin's sale. Like mm-hmm. they're, they're tried and true pizza since 1969. Um, and he wanted to, he, he just wanted the satisfaction of selling to somebody that wasn't going to change it. Yeah. So I, just certainly talked to him got the numbers it made sense uh we closed the deal um and uh you know we haven't changed anything mm-hmm. um it's all the same original recipe same products uh, who i buy them off of might change from time to time but yeah, yeah. uh but it's the it's all the same stuff now i mean i know new, Mar- new martinsville decently well it's a small west virginia town how how was that received um that you know to have new owners and what was a kind of an institution um 
it was kind of odd mm -hmm. uh, because at first nobody knew. Oh yeah, it was it wasn't publicly done. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know word got around, started getting out, and um, you know for the first two two years, I'd say, I mean, we had to fight like hell to convince people that we didn't change anything because mm -hmm. if it's a, if for some reason in people's mind if it's a different owner then right it's different right right um, and so much of of food is perception oh my god absolutely i mean whether that's that it's good or bad or different like there's yeah. so much of it that the the guest or the diner is bringing to that experience you know and that's why the people who really are top level doing what they're doing you know, they're thinking about everything from the first time that a customer hears about their restaurant to them arriving, getting out of their car when they first walk in, like all of the things. I, I remember talking to a guy that owned a, a pretty high end place out in California, and he was concerned about the temperature in the restaurant, but not not at head height when you were standing at head height when you were sitting. Mm -hmm. And that was the most important. And, and he had it dialed in, man. And like, that's that's an impressive level of uh of detail that <laughs> i am that is not my skill set details are are I'm, I'm a big picture guy right um uh, but the point being um all of those things influence how a person thinks about what the experience that they're having and, and what they bring to that experience in advance in their head um regardless of you know reality yeah i mean they say that food i, I don't know <laughs> What is it? What is it? Uh, 90 percent of statistics are made up, but right, <laughs> right. Um, but uh, the you know the saying pretty much goes, you know, the meal starts at the customer walking through the door. Right. So that's who the person that greets him, the first that seats him, their first visit from their server, uh, and. Um, it's only as good as it looks. So if it doesn't yeah. look good, it's that doesn't have nearly as good of a chance as being good. Right. Um, right. People make decisions with their eyes first, right? Their nose second, and mm -hmm. their mouth third. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I and uh, I don't know if you've if you've seen this uh, as much as I have or not, but the the food is probably the third most important thing in a restaurant experience. Sure. I mean, I think That's service is probably the the top most important. Uh, and then probably the location, the decor, the atmosphere, all of that, that's that both of those things are way more important. And people will go back to, as they often do in places like Outback, where you worked, where uh, the the atmosphere and the service is phenomenal. And I mean, I've eaten at an Outback in forever, so I don't I can't speak to their food, but um, people will choose great service over great food. Every There's time. no doubt. There's no doubt. Um, it's it's funny as a consumer um just at local restaurants knowing you know a lot of people in the local restaurants a couple there's a couple uh local servers um that kind of bounce around between restaurant and restaurant yeah but and they have a following they do just like they bartenders mm -hmm. they absolutely do and like it's just a you know when you walk in and sit down and he or she comes to the table you're going to have a good experience because mm -hmm. you, you no matter you know if they just got there uh, you know this is their second day or their second year the, the level of service is impeccable mm -hmm. and we're lucky enough to have a few people in our area that that are like that so all of that was to speak to um people feeling like things had changed with pjs even though you hadn't really changed anything how long you said that was about two years or so in uh, how long did it take for you to kind of push through that to the other side of at the uh, at the end of the day it still happens like, really we still get the comments oh it's not the same it's not the same <laughs> uh, you know I, i've offered to I'd, off, I'd offer to like hey come on in you know take a tour of the restaurant i'll, I'll, be, I'll be glad to do so with you right but, like nothing has changed you know yeah yeah uh you know nobody's taking me up on it but right it's uh it's just funny it's it, it's well, a preconceived thought right right and you're always going to have those folks i mean 
those are the uh you know downtown wheeling's not the same as it was in the in the 70s people too right like well it certainly isn't no it's not um uh, which i get maybe that was a bad analogy then but um yeah i just think you're always going to have the people that that's their that's their bent you know that's 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 the way they're leaning is to sure to feel that way or to look for that stuff to be, but, to be i mean everybody's a critic nowadays yeah you know yeah. i mean i mean the truth is everybody's got to eat food right so we have a good platform yeah uh, yeah but they don't have to like it so yeah. it's uh, and and that's weird too because sometimes you know we, we talked about atmosphere and service but honestly maybe these days convenience is the most important thing uh in, in i mean in some certain certain circumstances that's absolutely true i mean yeah who would eat fast food if if right he didn't have to now yeah. i would think um the location in new martinsville it is kind of on the south end of town there but you're right on the main drag i would think your location is pretty pretty solid is it it is uh it is fairly ideal um the the only thing is we're cash and carry only there's no dining room in new martinsville so mm -hmm. um it's kind of like old school to carla's you come you oh. call you order your pizza you come you pick it up and then you walk out take it home and eat it in the car or eat it at home. yeah you don't do delivery uh in new martinsville we do delivery uh to businesses uh -huh. we we're licensed to deliver to businesses and we recently um uh, took on doordash uh which has been pretty good and then um in in Moundsville, we do have a dining room uh so yeah. it's a full fully functional restaurant yeah 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 well yeah let's talk about that a little bit so um after after having pjs in new martinsville for a while you you moved pjs into the old varsity pizza in Moundsville, mm -hmm. which was kind of another um like institution in, sure, in, the, right. in the area right um i remember uh, eating there when I was a little kid right across the street from uh, Four Seasons Pool. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that was always a, a place to go or a place to, like, to get pizza from. There was only the one, so it felt kind of special. Um, and But that, is, in, instead of keeping it the way it always has been, this is a PJ's location. So things are done the way they're do, being done in, in New Martinsville. Is that right? Uh, correct. Um, what we did is we tried to hold on to the to some of the clientele uh so we kept varsity in the name mm -hmm. so and we went through their product mix and saw what they sold the most of um and they sold more um sandwiches and salads than they did pizza yeah so to be called varsity pizza and you sell more sandwiches and salads and you do right. pizza says something yeah yeah uh, so basically what we did is we just merged pj's pizza with the higher volume items from oh, okay. varsity pizza smart um in moundsville the, it's a full kitchen in new martinsville it's just de deck ovens yeah so it's we could we could do it in moundsville we, there's a lot of things we can do in moundsville that we can't do in new martinsville sure. just because of the limitations of the kitchen um so it is a, a more full menu um and uh it you know we we uh how do you say basically gutted the place and and rebuild it from the inside mm. um and uh there's a lot more seating and it's a lot more pleasant it's not so dark mm. uh, as it was um and uh, you know I, I wanted to i wanted to give marshall county uh like a real italian presence mm. like i'm not italian but mm. i like cooking italian mm -hmm. um and you can, there's there's nowhere in town to get a good plate of pasta uh, or, or lasagna or anything like that and i was like you know what let's do pj's pizza and let's let's give them some you know pasta and salads and things that are just not mediocre not mm -hmm. that you can go get anywhere else mm -hmm. um so you know we make our uh make almost everything from scratch yeah uh, and uh and it goes over really well but what it did was <laughs> turn menu pricing like pasta marinara from 5.99 mm -hmm. 
turned in pasta marinara and at 8.99 yeah yeah and a lot of what we found out over the last year was that the varsity a lot of the varsity clientele were um how do you say they were uh frugal that's why they ate there Mm -hmm. um and when you know we reopened with better product and higher prices that didn't go over with a lot of the people that were used to being able to come in and sit down and eat a meal for five dollars gotcha um so that took you know some some getting over and we made some people mad and that unfortunately happens right Uh, right but you just can't sell a burger fries and a drink for five dollars anymore no (laughs) you can't and and someone's always going to be mad about something right like sure sure i think i think the biggest part of that and and something i i feel like we've gotten a lot better with at vagabond is it's about setting expectations sure and communicating like this is where we're at you know like if you know now if we if we're we, i just feel like we're so much better of telling people like this is what's happening right now like there's a wait this is why there's a wait or that isn't on the menu like a lot of people they they expect to eat what they've always eaten you know sure. and like our sure. menu changes quarterly so it's like well that's not on the menu right now this is why it's not on the menu right now it's not in season uh we keep our menu smaller so that we can make everything in house and you know well, and so- that's reflective on your menu yeah so, like your menu says hey we resource this product from this right. local farm and so on and so forth so it's very uh it's not only what you're saying but it's also what you're doing and it's right. it's on your menu right right well i've refreshing. always looked at, i've always looked at our menu as a, like a contract sure you know so the menu is our contract with the customer and like what you see is what you get and then the servers are like ambassadors from the kitchen to the customer and they're 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 there to like explain and and like i don't know grease the gears or whatever like you know to really just kind of solidify the the relationship um that the contract the menu is is putting out there does that make sense yeah absolutely um all right i want to throw out a couple um entrepreneur um aphorisms at you and see what you think well aphorism yeah, I like things to say. I, I don't even know what that word means. Uh, we got Marty Medovic chiming in, chiming in. I just need to say hey to Marty. Um, he agrees. Uh, well, I can't, I can't remember what it was. Oh, he agrees about the food and the service that we talked about earlier. And uh, he just get, paid me a compliment that my my team is great at that. Uh, and Marty, I can, you should uh, take your family down sometime to Milesville and New Martinsville and try some of this pizza, man, because it's pretty phenomenal stuff. Um, so aphorism about entrepreneurship, number one. If you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. What do you think? Bullshit. <laughs> I love Why? what I do. I love what I did. Yeah. But it's stressful as hell. Mm-hmm. And maybe you don't work, but it it'll beat it'll beat you down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yep. we, we as restaurant owners, currently we're facing a lot of things that many previous restaurant owners didn't have to like Mm -hmm. um workforce uh finding help Mm -hmm. Uh, it's nearly impossible people aren't interested in working Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. um yeah yeah it's it's just been quite a challenge post covid yeah you know it is it's weird uh you know i i think i told you this the other day and it's a joke i make often but i'm like did did the rapture happen and and like we weren't called up like where did everyone go why is there no one to work anymore (laughs) it's just it is it's super weird and then the people who are looking i mean no offense to anyone looking for work but like that's pretty rough on this the skill set like you know a lot of people want to come in and 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 cook and and they just never actually cooked or they they want to serve without any experience or you know they've you know maybe worked a fast food place and like oh yeah i have all this experience but you know you 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 don't what you do is nothing like what we do right it might as well be an entirely different field sure uh yeah i know i i i'm not surprised but i definitely agree with what you your your evaluation of that statement i i love what i do i don't think there's anything i would rather be doing 
um, but it is a shit ton of work. It's exhausting and it's stressful and um, it's not always sometimes I wish I would just punch in a clock and I could go home at the end of the day and not worry about my job. Right. Uh, you know, it, it's funny. People like you and others have asked me, you know, the transition from sales to uh, restaurant owner, you know, they're, they're always asking, you know, do you like it better? Or, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, it's not about like, um, but um it's just trading one set of problems for another set of problems. Right. Right. Um, it's all customer service. Right. Um, they, they deal with it in a little, little different sort of way, but all it, but it's all customer service. Right. Yeah. But, uh, but it's the truth. I think it's the truth with anything as far as, I mean, ownership and sales have a lot in common in the fact that you're always selling yourself. Right. Um, so I think that was helpful. Um, but, uh, but yeah, sorry. I went off on a tangent. No, oh, it's all good, man. Um, so, okay. So I have another one for you. Sure. People always say, uh, you know, like when you, when you own your own place or you're an entrepreneur, they always say, well, it must be nice to be your own boss. What do you think about that? Mm, I think that, that, it, it there is a smidgen of that that is true but mm -hmm. the but at which time you stop thinking about and trying to support your business is when it starts to get away from you mm -hmm. um, so that's just something you can't do it it's, right it's got to be you have to always be available you have right. to be there it, right it's just and there's nothing, um, there's no uh, stand in. There's no, I mean, I can honestly say, I, I hate to say it, but my, my, my restaurant doesn't work as well when my wife or myself are, is not there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the problems that happen um, are always when we're not around. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's not that we're problem solvers. I think that it's just, maybe the authority figure is there and they mm -hmm. feel more uh apt to do it correctly right uh, take I, that extra step i mean it's it's it, it can be like a really minuscule amount of effort between doing it right and just getting by but that extra little bit of effort can mean all the difference oh yeah uh, and also i think it's um uh not perspective necessarily but just that the experience and like the 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 outlook that you have that you guys both have as owners um things are clear to you i think in a way that even um uh, with excellent employees that they're not always clear um like you know like i i've heard in the past and i've got a super good team right now they do do a phenomenal job um but i definitely have heard in the past um uh, you know we didn't know what you would want or we thought maybe this one was the way to handle it and like, I'm like oh, pick boy. up the phone if i'm not there yeah like just well, call me and that's always a thing too right like well i didn't want to bother you but like you know it's hard i i and i get it like having you know yeah, been an employee, my five-star review that now is a four-star review right i certainly would take that phone call to make it a five-star review yeah 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 for sure yeah. well and i think about kind of an inverted um, let's see inverted pyramid uh-huh um you know, like I may be the boss, but you know, my employees are, you know, they're, they're a concern. My gut, my guests are a concern. Like the community is a concern. Like I honestly feel like I'm a servant to all of those folks. Absolutely. And it's, and it's my job to, it's my job in the tribe or in the pack to be the leader and to make the ultimate decisions and bear the ultimate responsibility for that. But, um, that whole, <gasps> is that something you do? What? You bear the personal responsibility. It is indeed. That is amazing. <laughs> that, it's uh, that's so odd nowadays. Yeah, right. Pass the buck, Chuck. Uh, yeah, well, and that's I mean, a, a good leader like I uh, try to be. Um, I take all the responsibility, and I and I make sure to always share or pass off the uh, the acknowledgments to to my team. I couldn't do it without them, and you know, sure. so the successes are theirs, and the failures are mine, and sometimes that can be a really a really fucking lonely place to be yeah you know and that and that could be really hard yeah i have 
three spectacular managers. Um, my new Martinsville manager, she's as solid as solid could be. Um, and then, um, I, well, there's managers and assistant managers and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah. Uh, my management team, I'm really proud of. Um, yeah. They do a good job. Uh, and then, it, yeah, that's that. Well, um, yeah. But if, business ownership and, and, uh, and, and restaurant ownership, I feel like especially um, it's not for the, the weak of heart. Um, I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but a lot of times people will come into the restaurant and they'll, they'll talk to me about how like, Oh, I, I make a really great chili. And everyone says like, <laughs> I should open up my own restaurant. And I always tell them, no, you should not no. open up your own restaurant. No. You should continue to make really great chili. And if I've you been. can't tie your shoes uh, or get sleep through the night or uh, watch a movie or eat a meal without thinking about how badly you want to open up your restaurant, I still don't think you should open up your own restaurant. No, like, no. I, especially selling food for so long. I helped a lot of people open restaurants and so on and so forth. Um, and it was amazed me that like Sally thinks that because she's got a good meatloaf recipe, it, that it's going to make a good restaurant and, right. and it's just like um yeah i mean it's helpful but uh yeah it's but a it's lot more than just that so much more and i'm and i'm really lucky i guess that um i had these hidden unknown skill sets that i could actually keep the restaurant alive and build um because it has way less to do with my cooking than it does all the other things yeah for sure but speaking of cooking, um, mm. we're, we're getting towards the end of our time. And I really wanted to take some time and talk about all of your fun food experiments. And we, maybe we'll talk about whiskey a little bit too. Um, but okay. like every time I stop by the house, uh, you know, you're trying out a new, you're making a sausage or you're doing a pickle or, you know, something like that, which it just, it's really fun to talk about. And you should always share, which is very nice. Uh, and I'm just curious to, to talk a little bit about some of your food projects that you got going on. Like, what are you excited about making right now? <laughs> um, uh, uh, I, I don't really have anything fermenting. No, currently. no. Uh, I'm thinking about doing some koji. I, I th think that would be like a pretty cool ex experiment. And then, and then from from growing my own koji then i make soy sauce and oh um, wow and miso paste uh okay. things like that that'd be really that cool requires a lot of room which is not something i necessarily have yeah uh and time um right I, but the cool thing is just you know with with bacteria it's just provide the the correct environment and it'll do its it'll take care it's of a, itself yeah it's a, it takes it takes a long duration of time but how much active time uh, goes into it? You kind of, kind of lost you there. Oh, sorry. I say it, it takes a long the duration of time because it has to ferment and it has to do its thing. Right. But like that's passive. Like how much active time does it take? Right. Only at the beginning and the end. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, providing the, the correct environment, whether that be sitting on the shelf at room temperature or in a humidifier or in a dehydrator or, right. you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I certainly, enjoy, I, I guess I have more of a scientific brain than anything else. And yeah. I, enjoy, I enjoy the, the processes of the more complex foods, like you said, sausage or salami or um, cured meats or mm -hmm. charcuterie or uh, fermentation or pickling, you know, all that kind of stuff. I, I, yeah. I enjoy like, the science of food. Mm hmm. Um, yeah and it's evident and i think it's super cool and it's it's kind of it makes me think of how um like there's cooks or there's bakers but usually there's there, you're not both because cooking is more of like a gut instinct and 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 baking is more like science but you're both you you are you are uh the way you look at it is kind of like uh being a food scientist and i think you do some really cool shit with that that's fun i, I mean it's experimenting and and that for every good thing that i come to make i've probably thrown away three things right. that sucked you know right right well that's part of the process for sure <laughs> yeah. hey, Chaz Howell just chimed in that uh greatest cisco rep ever 
<laughs> Thanks, Chaz. <laughs> oh, so let's, I'm like... trying to think of what all I've got to sample. I know I've had some of your sausage, which was really good. Um, and do you had so how do you do you have a cabinet for that or was that yeah, a summer sausage? Have, have a do you remember what you gave me? Okay. Um, and someday I'd like to have a fermenting chamber, um, mm-hmm. but that's a fairly large investment. Um, and I'd love to have a tri aging chamber. Yeah, yeah, that would be really cool. Like Chef Chris has down at Northern. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that would be super cool. Yeah, that, that, yeah, someday. Um, you know what we used to do in Idaho, and I, I haven't tried here. The climate there was so different; it was so sure. dry, and and I've been consistently amazed with how big of a difference that makes um, for not only for food but for equipment and everything else in this in this environment where it's so humid. But we uh, we would make duck breast prosciutto, yeah, just in the walk-in, nice, and wrap it in cheesecloth and hang it from mm-hmm. uh, yeah. hang it from the the shelves with a tray underneath of it, to, and it never needed a tray, it never dripped, but it was there. Um, and boy, was that some dope stuff, man! That oh, was so no delicious. Uh, I don't know if that would work here in West Virginia or not. Um, one thing I have uh, resourced is a it's a plant based um it, it's kind of like a it's a sheet it's a okay. plant based uh opaque sheet that um you you can wet it and it becomes pliable and uh-huh. you can wrap a piece of protein in it and it basically keeps the bad bacteria out and the good okay. bacteria in hmm. um uh, I don't remember the name of it, but I'm sure if you searched on uh, uh, Amazon or something like that, it wouldn't be hard to find. Yeah. Um, and basically, it helps you turn a semi-regulated space into uh, a, a, a fermenting chamber or a aging chamber. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can it allows you to uh, ferment and age meats in your refrigerator. Oh, because wow. of this this film yeah. almost yeah. that's on the, your protein it's huh. super cool that's pretty so, cool yeah I, I, the last thing i made with that was the i made some copa um what's and, copa uh pork neck uh it's a dry aged um spicy ham oh okay basically. so is it a force meat is it a what do, do you do you stuff it is, do you grind uh, and stuff it or mm-mm, mm-mm, whole muscle you just try to remove as much of the fat you can oh, you wow. cure it uh then um then after it cures you wrap it in the stuff and i hung it in my beer cooler which doesn't get open very much yeah uh, in my office um mm. and it worked out wonderfully do you think it would work in my beer beer cooler in my office because it, it gets opened a lot more um no okay well, that's good to know <laughs> um so i'm trying to think of other things i know pickles you're a big pickle guy yeah my yeah um my daughter helps she's she's that's uh, cool. she's into she's into the pickle thing and she's even into the hot pickle thing really uh spicy. Are, are those mostly quick pickles or you're not i've done both um yeah. but uh I, i'm kind of a vinegar head so mm-hmm. the the quick pickle is more kind of my thing um yeah I've fermented pickles before and they're okay um the public might know them as like half sour or something like that pickles yeah yeah um they just they uh they don't they take on a lot of salt but not much else okay um so they're kind of they kind of taste like a fresher pickle huh. uh but it, they're generally pretty salty okay because okay. you need that salt to keep the bacteria away yeah yeah because have you ever done vinegar. um sauerkraut or kimchi uh, i've done lots of kimchi um yeah. sauerkraut no i've never done it because i couldn't get anybody else in the house to eat it <laughs> i've made <laughs> sauerkraut only twice and the first time it, it went it was beautiful and god it was it delicious and then the second time it went south it was too warm and it didn't work mm. yeah it, it's a i mean they're not all that far apart just right. kimchi instead of using just straight salt you got the gochujang in there and uh well, yeah, or, well go to gyru yeah the chili flakes the, yeah. the korean chili flakes uh and then the um whatever fish sauce or 
yeah what whatever you decide to use uh as far as that's concerned they use a lot of dehydrated like shrimp and mussels and they grind them all up and nah it's you know that's uh, it, it's all um I, I, it's not necessary if you as long as you have something like fish sauce or sardines or something like that that you want okay. to huh, that's really cool have you ever uh have you ever heard of a thousand year old egg have i ever told you my thousand year old egg story the um the is that the one yeah of course in asia in an asian country yeah yeah and it's um malut maluk i i don't know for sure about that but it's uh it's a controlled fermentation with an egg uh and when it's done the egg shell is is black and the egg white is like this like gelatinous consistency and it's like a smoky dark gray and the yolk is like this weird pasty green okay um i have certainly never had it i've seen it before have you had one uh well i was i I do a spot on um on local radio every week and we were talking about it a week or two ago um and uh it is the most disgusting thing i've ever eaten oh no 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 you need to try i think it's called balut um, is that the fermented fish? That it it's a fermented, fertilized chicken egg. Oh God, no! Thank you. Yeah, dude, you're wow. not talking like feathers. Beef. Oh wow! Yeah, that's intense. Yeah, I, I I think it's Vietnamese, and it's it, it's like balut. B I don't know. Bal- I'm sure you could find it if you yeah, yeah. chose to. Yeah, I think I would have to uh I would have to do natto before I did that cuz natto is a lot easier. That's just like fermented soybeans and rice that Japanese people eat for breakfast. But it's like oh, yeah, yeah. You, it's you see them eat it and it's like yeah. this long string like yeah. <laughs> oh, that's like, breakfast. That, it's it, it might taste delicious, but the texture trying to get used to that would be crazy yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean most Erica, uh, Erica just set up held up a card that says balut B A L U T. Okay, balut out the I will have to check it out, but probably with my eyes only. I don't think I want to eat that. <laughs> I think the uh, grossest thing I ever ate, uh, Angie Slay from uh, yeah. 19 Coal. Mm-hmm. Her dad um, is is Hungarian uh, through and through. And he made these, like, I guess that the equivalent would be, like, pickled pig's knuckle okay. or something. Yeah. And it's the only thing in my life maybe in my adult life that i put my mouth tried to tried to try to bite and then immediately spit it back out the texture was so (laughs) awful i mean it was like cartilage oh uh it it was firm i have a hard time with feet in general i i've never eaten a pickled pig's foot or 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 chicken feet like i i mean i'm not saying i wouldn't try it but i'm just uh i'm just not i i I really struggle with that now on the other hand i do have i have uh home pickled eggs in my fridge as we speak yeah i'll eat those all the time yeah i've i've been trying to do the the soft boiled uh uh shoyu egg Uh uh-huh uh but again i'm probably the only one well i'm the only one in in the house that'll eat as you say a dippy egg right right uh Good so old. that wouldn't go over well with everybody else uh chaz says uh oh not the sauce oh wait not the sauce that angie's dad made LOL. yes lol yes <laughs> that chad <laughs> chad worked for angie for a spell and oh, uh, nice and uh i don't I, I'm, I'm not sure if he was there at that point in time yeah. but uh if, if if he remembers it there's no forgetting it um so all right let's talk we're we're, we're getting you know, yeah, out yeah, of our sorry. time here and no 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 it's totally fine but I, I want to talk a little bit about some of the other meats that you've done because i think it was a summer sausage that you gave me like a year or so ago and man i loved it the boy loved it and uh, we ate it really quickly um and i highly recommend you making more of that <laughs> uh that a friend of mine um had a friend that shot a bear and he had all this extra bear meat and uh he's like it's getting close to a year old in the freezer he's like can you do something with it i was like yeah of course yeah uh so i made some i made the summer sausage and he took some and i kept some um 
I, I, I like the flavors that came out of it, but yeah. I didn't like the bind all that well. Yeah. Uh, it was a little bit chalky, um, but, but the flavors were there. So yeah, that's good stuff. Do you, do you mess with any other like meat uh, aging or anything like that? Uh, like not currently. I, yeah. I would like to get into making like true um, inoculated uh, sal salumis and such. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. But you really need that uh, that chamber, that yeah. humid yeah. and temperature controlled chamber to you know keep keep that fifty two degrees to fifty four degrees or whatever it is. Yeah, it's very uh, specific. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that's where the the good mold grows and the right. bad mold doesn't. Um, right. Type of a thing. But if anybody's ever interested in that, I I follow lots of people on Facebook or not Facebook, but uh, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, it's a thing where you watch videos. YouTube, YouTube, yeah, uh, <laughs> and and it's got, it's the the sausage guy that's really really good is two guys in a cooler. That's the okay. name of the page, uh, and he goes into a very specific detail as to how to do things properly and safely uh that's which is cool. a big thing in right right curing meats uh, and it's well for very, home very use you can get a little more you know firing from the hip or whatever uh doing any of that stuff in a professional setting obviously you've got to have like a hazard sure. plan and like all the mm -hmm. things yeah but we're right, talking right. about like home home play yeah, exactly. You know, that we're yeah, not getting anyone not, sick not, Nothing I'd ever do for the restaurant. And right, if I did, right. I'd have to do it in a very, very different way. Well, and it would be, it's, it would be super expensive because you'd have to put you know, so much more R&D into it and you would have to have a plan. And it, it's unfortunate. I understand why, uh, but it's unfortunate that we're prohibited from playing as much uh, professionally. All right. Well, and it makes sense. They're yep. Just trying it. to make sure we don't kill somebody. Right. Don't want to get anyone sick. Don't want to kill anyone. Yeah, for like, sure. Like life's all that great anyway. Come on. <laughs> did I did you did you get any of the um oh well the thing I made uh pick, pickless? No. What was that? Oh, I didn't give you any of the pickless. I don't I don't I don't think. It's the finely diced peppers and um it's no. basically oh okay. It's like a um is it not Jamaican? Um oh it's it's a Caribbean type thing. Okay. Uh, and like a it's, relish it's very much like a relish okay but i'm in i love relishes oh and it's uh got habaneros in it so it's got a lot of spice yep. and i'm the, super in and there's not there's other than the vegetables and the spices the only other ingredient is vinegar Perfect. so it's it's yeah it makes it makes um uh, i made a, a tuna salad sandwich out of it oh like nice. tuna that uh you know a um tablespoon of that and yeah. then, uh the mayonnaise and oh my it was banging like yeah, that was the I best bet. tuna fish sandwich i've ever eaten in my life <laughs> did you uh did you try any of my chow chow i don't think so oh man um, i'm super proud of my chow chow it now that's a sweet pickle type thing right yeah it's it's uh it's an appalachian regional thing and it varies depending on where where you're at um but i believe green tomatoes are instrumental uh and also i think cauliflower is important to have in it hmm. um but mine's all kinds of stuff and uh I, a friend of mine had some habaneros that, that he grew and i put in i put those in there and there's a ton of things in it but i i was uh feeling my wheaties and i i did i really find small cuts on everything so it, it just really has a nice it's very i feel like it's very attractive and it tastes really good i'm really proud of it I couldn't agree more. That's exactly what I did. Everything yeah. was cut by hand, no, not a mandolin, not a yeah. Uh, and uh, it just turned out real nice, and the texture is really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think yours is probably just a sweet version of what I made. Okay, or something similar. We'll have, we'll have to try them side by side sometimes. Yeah, man. I, I can't. I can't believe I didn't give you any. Um. All right. Well, technically we're out of time, but I don't okay. care. I I want to talk about whiskey a little bit. Whiskey. Yeah, we both love the whiskey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, more whiskey with an e than than scotch whiskey with no e right um and i would i would hazard to guess for both of us probably more bourbon uh than blended but, agreed um and i'm so a yeah, big rye fan as you know yes i do i do love rye i like the burn in rye and i like i like the flavor profile of a good rye whiskey um so yeah just just 
rap about whiskey for a little bit because I got you on here and we both love it. What's well, your favorite whiskey? But... <laughs> okay uh, all right so let what what is uh the worst experience you've ever had with whiskey I, i'm not talking not, about drinking too much or anything I, like. i'd rather not say <laughs> I, we you and i had a conversation recently about a, a whiskey that was really bad oh yeah 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 but yeah. um i think it may be a bottling issue from the right. bottler right and i'd rather not say no and i appreciate that's that not fair I, yeah no i think that's that's very graceful and i appreciate that um yeah, and that certainly happens when when you're making a, a product a small scale. Uh, think things can go wrong, but um, I don't know. It just leapt to my mind uh, an evening with Mad Dog 2020. Is that a whiskey? Um, well, I guess if you put it in a cask and aged it, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that crap is. Horrible. It's, it's malt liquor. It's 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 mind eraser and wild Irish rose. I remember a bad evening with that as well pretty sure that's not whiskey no that's i don't even know what that is i mean i know what it is but it uh, uh, cordial yeah 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 i don't know like uh mad dog um so yeah so not was there ever a time where like you were really other than what we just are glossing over like we're really let down by whiskey or we're really like i know i've i've had like that 1792 we were looking at yesterday at the restaurant Mm -hmm. like it's a really good mixing whiskey, but man, it is such a punch in the face if you drink it straight. Sure. And I was sure. really surprised by that, you know, because I'm, I like my whiskey neat and, you know, maybe one ice cube in it, um, but I really like the flavor of it. And it was a new experience for me to be introduced to something that actually is just really works better as a mixer or as an ingredient in a cocktail, like makes a great old fashioned, not something you'd want to drink straight. Uh, yes that's certainly true um as far as best is concerned i recently had a, an opportunity to have a drink with a friend of mine that he busted out a very old whiskey and um and it was kind of mind-blowing yeah and uh like pretty unforgettable yeah 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 the old stuff well i was i was telling you uh I, I used to be kind of snobby about that too, or maybe the opposite of snobby. Cause I was like, ah, whatever. It doesn't make that big of a difference. Like, like it reminds me of how I used to think about coffee. I'm like, ah, coffee's coffee, whatever. Like it's not a big deal. And then I worked at a, a really great coffee shop in Chicago. And I realized that coffee is not just coffee and that coffee actually is a lot of things. Um, and I started developing like a preference for different, different roasts and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> and I found that, uh, it doesn't always necessarily depend on the age or the price. However, those top dollar, really old whiskeys can be pretty amazing. Exactly. Pretty amazing. And a then, lot of things happening. And then you and I did that whiskey t- pair tasting at Ogilvy. Yeah, that uh, was fun. A couple months back. And um, this is the card for that. If I can Oh, yeah focus yep we got it and uh the um the rebel cast drink was my favorite I, yeah i wrote it there yeah that and was I, a standout good one for sure and uh i believe your favorite was the one underneath it the no wait i think you'd like the bakers didn't you i can't remember i think it was the bakers yeah, that was a fun time. That was yeah. a really interesting evening, and it was fun to try all those different whiskeys kind of back to back to back. <clears throat> but it makes such a difference, like what order you taste them in. And, you know, of course, we're contrary folks, so we went backwards. Um, and I don't but know. But it, it ended up in our favor, like big time. Yeah, it did, for sure. You might want to explain why. <laughs> well, other than the fact that we had table mates who did not enjoy whiskey as much as we did, and we, often got a chance to also sample their whiskey which was great because being um experienced whiskey tasting folks it was nice to get more than just the uh half an ounce pour right and because we went from we went the opposite way we went 10 that 10 and down or whatever the eight 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 back yeah back rather than one to eight um the higher proofs were 
in at the end yeah. of the of the of the thing. So as their experience went, it was building proof until the end. Whereas we we went heavy at the beginning. And right. We were getting lighter. Well, right. Because they weren't necessarily whiskey drinkers. Right. The 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 more potent stuff they couldn't handle. Right. So they were like, "Do you want this?" And yep. And that's it, like, it, it, yeah. I, yeah. I believe I believe I do. <laughs> that, that sounds fantastic. It reminds me of uh, <clears throat> being a, an altar boy uh, way way back in the day, and you know, in the Catholic Church, we we drink straight up real wine and um, take Eucharist, and and after that, if there's wine left in the cup, you can't. I mean, that's the blood of Christ, man. You can't pour that shit down the drain. So if the uh, the the sweet little old ladies who were offering the the wine to uh, the the congregants, if they didn't want to drink it, they passed it to me, the 16-year-old altar boy who was way okay with drinking altar wine because I thought it tasted pretty doggone good. Oh, I didn't have that experience. But yeah. I did have, it's Milra time. Milra time. <laughs> That's he, funny. Marty would walk up from the basement of the Golden Chopsticks after a Friday night or a Saturday night. We're like 15, or no, 16, 17, 18 years old. I don't know. Yeah. Six, 17, probably. <laughs> and uh, he'd have a case of Miller Light in his hand and he'd go, it's Milra time. And he'd just share it with, really? out with everybody? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. That Make kind all of the stuff builds a lot of work. rapport. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's something I, I think is super important. And we don't do at my restaurant right now is like a, a, a family meal. You know, and I think mm-hmm. that's I think that's a super important thing to do. We do have shift drinks though, and and that's that's nice for for folks to have that moment to just sit down and enjoy, you know, the restaurant that they're working so hard to support. I think that's a really good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, I don't know what else to talk about, brother. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I got a lot sure... of unopened bottles here that mm, I need your help with. Oh, well, I'll I'll be right over. <laughs> i i do i do seriously love me some buffalo trace and uh i i i think the first time did i ever tell you about the first time i ever had buffalo trace i don't believe so it was at uh kuma's corner a heavy okay, metal that's the burger place in bar. chicago yeah heavy oh. metal burger bar in chicago and they were super popular they had they would have a line out the door and uh, we went on a sunday and there was like a line down the block to get in there but once you got inside, you could start drinking. And they had whiskey on tap, which I had never heard of before in my whole entire life. And I don't remember, they had two or three different whiskeys on tap, but I got Buffalo Trace and I fell in love. And that's still my favorite. It's a good one. That's why yeah. it's so hard to find. Right. They're having issues with the um, the bottle and the distri- bottler and the distributor are having yeah. some sort of issues. Uh, but yeah, that whole line. Earl Breath of product is is generally quite solid. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Cool. Well, man, it's been a real pleasure talking to you tonight. I thank you for your time and oh, friendship no over the years. Yeah, have any time. I mean, it's not hard to talk about business or experiences or any of that. Right. It's, it's, well, it's hard. I'm... It's hard begging a customer to uh, <laughs> give you another chance. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I hope everyone that joined us had a good time because I know we did. Oh, uh, Chaz said that Whistle Pig is his favorite. Uh, well, well you and stuff. I had a Whistle Pig together. Yep, and that was really good. I that liked was it a t- lot. Six year. I also have a 10 year. Yeah. Um, but the the next one, the 18 year, whatever, it's like stupid expensive. So yeah. that's not happening here. Right. But you own a restaurant. You must make tons of money. Uh, <laughs> uh how now, true it isn't yeah i'm just gonna go uh i'm gonna go get naked roll around in piles of 100 dollars bills so yeah that's how yep, i like, am my sunday nights like ducktails like, yeah exactly uh, like Scrooge that. mcduck yep awesome <laughs> all right brother all right love you forever thank you so have, much have a great evening take care Bye. thanks everyone Bye bye